All right, all fans of Transformers and Transformers toys, I have something a little different for you today. This toy was recently purchased and I was aware he was coming out for quite a while, but I thought he was gonna be one of the last of a slew of characters that were supposed to be recently coming out. And if you're picking up on this from my last video, yes, it is an X-Transbots toy. Uh, I remember last time around we did uh, Overdrive and his other two Omnibot fellows were supposed to be released as well, plus a few others along the way that I was really looking forward to. And I think, my, this hat doesn't fit, what the fuck? Um, and there's a, a few other ones I was really excited for that were supposed to be released, like if not this past summer, maybe even the summer before that. Like it's, it's been a while I've been waiting for these and so far just the one Overdrive have, has come out. And now this second one has, which was probably the one I was least looking forward to, but at least it's another toy on the shelf. At least it's another X Transbots figure uh, in my possession. And, uh, and here we are talking about him. Now, this guy entered very late in the series, in season four, actually, the last season, which was very short, and uh, right at the beginning of the series. And without further ado, today we are looking at Punch, Counter Punch, Now, this guy has two names because he's got dual, he's got a couple of dual things. First of all, if you see here, it looks like there's two characters on the package. There are two images, but it's actually the same character. He can transform into two different looking robots. And the reason for this is because he's a spy. So, he's actually an Autobot, and when he's an Autobot, his name is Punch. He can also pose as a Decepticon. When he is a Decepticon, his name is Counterpunch. So he's got two different looks. He's got two different personalities or personas, if you will. So his job obviously is intelligence, is uh, sabotage, is espionage. So he's an Autobot, but a lot of the time he is uh, in his, um, I think that's Counterpunch right there. He's in his Counterpunch guys within the Decepticon ranks, trying to ferret out what he can to report back to the Autobots uh, to help their cause and help them stay one step ahead of the Decepticon, so to speak. So the problem with this is that although Punch, Counterpunch is, is a very cool, calculated, capable fellow, so many years, so much time spent in his Counterpunch persona within the Decepticon ranks well, let's just say he's seen some shit and it's starting to get to him. Uh, he's seen a lot of violence when he's in his counterpunch mode, he becomes a little bit violent. When he's in his punch mode within the Autobot faction, he's like, oh, what if they also have a double agent spy guy? So who here is, is actually Decepticon and, and, and trying to eavesdrop on us sort of thing. So the paranoia, the craziness, it's all kind of swirling in his mind and uh, creating what is a very volatile character? Now, I'm gonna show you a clip from his introduction in, in season four, which I think takes place in the Rebirth part one, which is the very first episode of that uh, season, if I remember correctly. Um, I recorded it last week, hoping to do it this weekend, but if, if you remember, if you watched some of my gameplay videos, I was kind of hungover on Sunday, so um, it didn't happen. So I think it's from the Rebirth Part 1. This is where he's introduced into the series. And unfortunately, in this clip, he's kind of made out to be a little bit of a bitch, but at least you'll get to see him in action. So let it roll. Wingspan and pounce. What are those spies up to? Time for me to do a little spying of my own as a Decepticon. told me to check up on you. Be the counterpunch! We don't need your help! Fine, you deal with my Autobot counterpart. I've heard he's nearby. Real nearby. Do 
Here is the key. Grab it and let's go. There you got to see him kind of get the drop on those two Decepticons in his counterpunch guys, then go out in the hallway, switch over to punch, and then uh, break in on those two what seem to be small and insignificant Decepticons, and then get his ass handed to him. So it wasn't Punch's greatest moment there, but at least you get to uh, see what he looks like there, hear what he looks like, and kind of get a feel for his, uh, you know, dueling looks and personality sort of thing. So now, I never had Punch Counterpunch when I was a kid, his G1 toy. He actually... That last season of Transformers was kind of a weird one. They were getting into the Headmasters. The line was getting a little bit away from where, you know, its roots began. Some of the toys were cool. Some of them were really bad. The original molds were all the best. Um, and, and, and I know they tried some stuff over the years, but you can't beat the original, that, that G1 first season wave of characters. Uh, both the characters and the molds they gave them were just amazing. So. Later on in the series, when they started introducing these new types of toys with these different gimmicks and stuff, it just didn't work like the original ones did. I still wanted them all. I still had some. I still played with them like crazy, but they weren't the same. So Punch Counter Punch, I never had his toy. I never really wanted it. Well, I probably did, but I never really wanted it enough to actually pursue it that much. And uh, And to be honest, it's not that great of a mold. Let me just show it to you and you can, uh, you can make your own judgment on it. Here it is. So, you know, it's all right. It's not great, it's not terrible. Um, I had some of those Headmaster toys. I had Chrome Dome, I think. Uh, maybe maybe Chrome Dome was the only Headmaster toy I had. It was a decent toy, but uh, yeah, I, it, and even Punch Counter Punch, even his character in the show, I'm sure I knew him as a kid because I, as a kid, I had everything locked up here when it came to Transformers, G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles, like just ask me anything, I'll tell you the answer sort of thing. So I'm sure I knew of his character from the show as a kid, and I'm sure I knew everything about him, or at least as much as we could know without the internet and, and just what you could glean from the actual show and the footage in the show. Um, but all these years later growing up, before I rewatched the Transformers cartoon, all those years later when I was in my 30s maybe, uh, maybe my, even my early 40s, um, I totally forgot about him until I watched the cartoon and I was like, oh yeah, punch, counter punch, right? And so then he kind of came back to me and, uh, and now I, I've done my research, I've got his toy and uh, he's gonna finally enter my shelf, you know, however many years after Transformers debuted in 1984. What year is it? Yeah. yeah, basically 40 years later sort of thing. So now his alt mode is pretty cool. It looks, at least it appears to look like a Pontiac Fiero, which was a pretty cool car back in the day. Um, so I can't wait to get him out of this box. Again, another X Transbots toy. I'm always happy about that. And I hope just like with Overdrive, he comes in his car mode. So I can only I only have to transform him once and then leave him there rather than transform him into a car and transform him back sort of thing. Uh, but it will be interesting to see how the tran the double transformation goes to the two different looking types of robots. If it's just going to be a couple of flips and dips here to get him over to the other looking robot or if it's a more complicated process. I'm very curious and interested to see how that goes. So without further ado, once again, let's get this rascal out of his box and see what he looks like. Punch, counter punch, let's have a look. And I'm sorry about my dirty table here. I should have cleaned it, but I didn't realize it was dirty until I was already into this and uh, didn't really want to go deal with it. And dirty table isn't a code for like a sexual thing either. I actually have a dirty table. Okay. Same old shit. Same old fucking shit. Ugh. Ugh. We got character card as usual a little punch counter punch and this is kind of cool x transbots has named him bond dash james right yeah secret agent indeed right instruction booklet he's got a little satchel here so he has his different wapunda 
if you will, for each mode. Holy God, okay, I'm just gonna rip this. So his black one is for his counter punch mode. And then his yellow one is for his punch mode. Um, and then it looks like he's got a face plate here, an extra face plate, looking kind of surprised and shocked and appalled. Um, and then here is a head. I'm not sure if the head isn't on him right now or if this is just a, a different looking kind of head. We'll, we'll figure that out soon enough. But yeah, it's got... So it just kind of flips around, right? Like there's punch, there's counter punch sort of thing. So I'm not sure if that's how it's gonna work when it's actually on there, like the one that's already on there, if there is one, or if this is a different one for some reason. But uh, there are all his little accoutrements. As for him, yes, car mode, baby, car mode. Oh, look at that sweet ass Fiero. Oh, again, they put the QC sticker right on the fucking car. Look at this thing, it's, it is definitely a Pontiac Fiero. There's no mistaking that body type, um, but it's got the dark kind of midnight or whatever you want to call it, blue, very glossy, shiny, and then the red, uh, the red rims. That's, that's pretty sick. That's a, that's a pretty neat looking car right there. So, uh, so far I'm very impressed. I like what I see. Now, the, only, the other thing I wanted to tell you was when the box showed up, sometimes they advertise future characters on the box. But for some reason, I thought the picture on this box was actually what he was going to look like. And down here, there's like a, because he's kind of the same color, this light blue Porsche 959. So I'm like, oh, because this was the American version, not the Japanese version. So I'm not sure if that meant the whole mold was different. It's really weird. I'm not sure what the difference is, but I thought... Oh fuck, he's a Porsche 959. So no, this is probably another one of their additional characters that is coming out, but I have no idea who it is. So I think I'm gonna Google that and uh, and see who the hell that's supposed to be because all the ones that I know are supposed to be coming out, I know who they all are, I know what their alt modes are, I know what character they are, but this one's a complete mystery. So I thought I would mention that because I thought that was kind of interesting. And uh, hey, one more robot I'll hopefully at some point be able to add to my shelf, whoever it is. Now let's, I kind of zoned out there for a minute thinking about Porsche 959s. I have one down on my shelf right now. I'm just a nice cherry red. Anyways, never mind. What we'll do now, we'll flip this over to time lapse. You know the drill. We'll get him transformed into his robots mode. And uh, yeah, see what he looks like in his, uh, in his bot modes. Okay, so what did you think of this? I'm not sure if you could get the gist from the time-lapse video, but this was a challenging, interesting, and also quite a rewarding transformation because there's a couple of really sore spots on it that I was really getting worked up about and I couldn't figure it out from the instructions to whatever. Um, 
getting the legs f first when I separated them to get them to actually flip out. Um, I was totally misreading the arrows on the instructions and I, I thought I was going to break at some point. And, but eventually I figured it out and then they came out and then this whole back end of the car, um, actually the, this, it's a whole bunch of different pieces of the car all came down into the feet when it was a really complex transformation. This was a really outside the box type of uh, mold in, in, in the way it all came together. Really, really interesting. And, and then also when I was pulling out the hands and stuff, I'm like, oh, his hands are backwards. Like they put them on wrong sort of thing. And until I got to the very end and I went, oh, well, not the very end, but near the end when I saw how it was gonna pan out, I was like, oh, fuck. So we don't actually do much changing to get to punch and counter punch. So I'm gonna keep them in Decepticon mode because obviously the Autobots outnumber the Decepticons by a lot. So I thought maybe I'll, I'll keep punch, counter punch and counter punch mode. And at least it'll look like the Decepticons have a bit more numbers on their side than usual. So here is counter punch, Decepticon mode. All you do, flip them around and there's punch. It's not quite as simple as that. You have to, his, his counter punch hands, you have to bring up, pull out the punch ones, and then tuck the counter punch ones in. Um, and then he's obviously double jointed at the elbows. Then his hands uh, become that. And then also for punch, you fold these back and gives him a bit of a different profile sort of thing. So, but other, otherwise it's just, you just flip him around and, and there he is sort of thing, which was kind of cool. I thought uh, a, a cool way of doing it to uh, keep the transformation probably a little simpler than it would have been otherwise. So. I thought that was pretty neat. Now, the, um, oh, I wonder if his, oh yeah, I bet these do too. Just like with overdrive, I forgot. There's his headlights just popped out of the, uh, the front there, which is cool. Damn it, I wish I'd done those and uh, remember to do that in car mode. But anyways, yeah, so the headlights pop out too. And you can see in the pictures, the doors, the car doors open. So this is very consistent with overdrive too. A couple of little bonus features there uh, when you're in vehicle mode, you can, play with the headlights and the doors and stuff, which is kind of cool they built that in. Um, as for the mold itself, um, again, X-Transbots use varying amounts of metal, but usually there's always some a decent amount of metal in their molds. Overdrive last week was really heavy for his size. Punch Counter Punch is not quite as heavy as Overdrive, but he's still He's got some heft to him. Um, he's still got some significant heft, so you can tell they used a fair amount of metal in them. Um, most things were pretty tight. There were a couple of things that are a little bit loose or didn't quite go exactly as I was um, hoping they would tuck in and fit in somewhere. But for the most part, it is a pretty tight, uh, well-fitting, uh, well-thought-out robot. And the other thing I really like about him is that he's a Pontiac Fiero. And not like a standard straight red one with the silver rims. No, he's fucking bright midnight blue with bright red rims. This thing is nuts. Um, now, I know that's what the character looked like in the show and that's what they based it on, but uh, just a really unique uh, character that I'm adding to my shelf that is very much unlike any other I've got on the shelf. And from such, to me as a kid, comes from such an insignificant character in my interpretation of the Transformers universe, uh, G1 cartoon universe, not only when I was a kid, but now as, as an adult, like Punch Counter Punch really factored into nothing for me. Um, he was cool and stuff and I liked him, but really he had no significance uh, for me. So this toy in this experience with this toy has kind of maybe upped his value to me overall as a character, simply just by owning him and, and going through this process of transforming him and, and adding him to my collection. So that's also a little side benefit of, of obtaining this character. So uh, next week, um, depending on how the weekend goes, I could even get another one done this weekend coming up. I doubt I will if we're gonna decorate from Chris, for Christmas. So just shh, don't let anybody said I said, uh, tell, tell anybody I said that because I always hate decorating two trees and bringing them all up from the basement, but that's another matter. So if Christmas decorating gets passed over this weekend, I might do another one. If it doesn't, and I'm bringing up Christmas trees and decorations and there's glitter flying everywhere, there will not be another Transformer uh, unboxing coming this weekend. But I only have one left in my um, masterpiece scale uh, collection right now. 
Like I said, X-Transbots is coming out with supposedly many more in the future. So I hope to keep over time picking one up here and there and, and, and unveiling more of them to you uh, over the coming months and stuff. But uh, after this next one, which is a cool one, one of my favorites as a kid, um, th that's going to be the last maybe for a little while, unfortunately. So, but um, I have some other things up my sleeve. So we'll do one more in the near future and then we'll branch out into a bit of other stuff for a little while. And then we'll just see where my life's unboxing journey takes us. Maybe I'll unbox an actual box for once. It's been a while, but, but let's not go there. Why get dirty right at the end of a toy video, right? But my channel's not for kids. I marked that down in the settings. So anyways, I'm rambling. I'm tired. It's a weeknight. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoy. Meow.